in reaction. Tell us more about why you've decided to launch this broadside against the presidency. Well, first of all, let me <clears throat> honor, <clears throat> as you rightly said, I'm supposed to be one of the top uh, member of this government or the committee. Mm. And uh, most importantly, I have this relationship with, uh, personal relationship with Mr. President dates back long. We well, were very, very anxious, looking forward to what and believing in what he said, the renewed hope. Mm. And when he came on board, you can see he's somebody that is very anxious about, and that was why he took, he, he is used to taking some bold decisions. But as I said, and I'm on TV, I, I speak straight. If Indeed. There's, yeah, if, if there's anybody that will, you know, say what I'm saying is not true, can come up tomorrow and talk to Charles. This government is going down, and that is because it's, I, 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 yesterday I did not say it is taken over or polluted by plutocrats. No. If it were plutocrats, it would be better. But this government, and you can quote me on that, is now run by kakistrocrats. And that's very, very Explain. dangerous. Explain. Kakistrocrats? I have it here. You can check the definition. It's a government run by worst, least qualified, and most un unscrupulous citizens. I'm not the first one that says. Right, because the, the reason I, I mean, you, you were quoted as saying by several different sources, um, as saying that the government's been taken over by plutocrats. And I was going no. to ask you to clarify that, because plutocrats are wealthy people, Where people. No, no, who that are is running not what sort of a government. No, this government right. is populated by kakistrocrats and kleptocrats. Right, okay, kleptocrats, Klep yes. people who are members of the kleptocracy, yeah. who, who are basically dipping their in hands into the tail To make all the, the time. government for what they can make for right. themselves. Right, okay. Unfortunately, that is not what the president personally, as I know right. him, as I said, is up to. He really meant this renewed agenda hope thing. But you can only do that when you have people around you that are on the same uh, kind of thinking. Right. But I, 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 this is not what is happening right now. And as you can see, one, two, three incidences where when the president realizes he is not ashamed of taking decision to correct it. Even when it started with appointments and all that. And the same thing with policies. When they bring policies that the people are against, I give you an example recently with this uh, cyber crime levy. Mm. When the president realized that you have not heard about it, he again he quickly suspended it. What I'm hoping now is that he will look in look out and get, I don't believe, again I say, that he is in the real picture of is what is happening out there. People are angry. You can't imagine the number of calls I received today, including yourself. Commend I called you very early in the morning. <laughs> yeah, but what were you saying? Hey, you are yourself again, because you say it as it is and you come, look, somebody has to do this. I'm 64 years old, I thank God for everything. And I think what is left to me as a politician or expected of me is to speak out the truth to whoever he is. Mm. Well, that's, that's one of the reasons you were elected into office by people. I mean, the, the idea is that you're supposed to represent them truthfully. Yeah, and, um, and that's what so I'm trying to do. So you speak truth to power. <clears throat> now we have a big challenge, and that is the threat of hunger and food scarcity. It is not only that the prices or inflation has gone up to 40%, but it has gotten in some places where you can, you, do, you don't, you will not, with your money, you won't find the food or the items you want to buy. That is very, very dangerous, and Nigeria has never been included in the countries that face severe food crisis or yes. food insecurity. But this time around, check the figures. Recently, you know, published by UN, World Food Program, Action Against Hunger, um, Kade Harmonize, they rank Nigeria as one of the hotspots. And for people like me, I have to be scared. 
as I told you, I'm 64 years old with 10 children and 20 grandchildren. I don't have passport or visa to anywhere. I don't have, you have more than one visa, passport, I know. But <laughs> what, I what do you mean I have more than one? I know, you we're stay in London. We're not talking about me, we're talking about you. You stay in Nigeria, you stay in London, and you can go to London tomorrow morning. I cannot do that because I don't have visa to anywhere. Yeah, but I'm sure you wouldn't have too much of a challenge getting a visa. No, you have you're, to you're get, you have to apply. No. But, but let's, let's so, so, focus. So yeah. this is a very serious and scary situation. And most importantly, in the why I'm so scared, is if those in power do not allow the president to know the magnitude or get informed about it so that they do something, mm. then you get worried. It's like now, Charles, we are here and the cloud is gathering. And I say, Charles, it's going to rain. You say, oh, no, don't worry. Then <laughs> that is scary. Mm. I, I think you, you've, you've made some very interesting points there. On the other hand, of course, um, the people who are in the president's um, backyard, if you like, inside the presidency, would make the argument, would dispute what you're saying. They would say, for instance, that the president has been holding a meeting about the minimum wage thing with labor union leaders today. Surely he must know. No, that is not that it. The reason why they're talking, I mean, he must know that, you know, the, the reasons why they want a higher minimum wage is because of the conditions in the country and, and all the rest of it. And they would be speaking directly to him. So he can't be that shielded from the facts, can he? I mean, he, he must know what is going on. Well, if you say so, but I don't see so. Mm. Or anything the president does is something that can be seen. If you know the president before now, then you know that the whole scenario has changed. This is somebody, he stays in Lagos. If you go to Bodiland, any time, any day, any time in the night, you can go to Bodiland 2 o'clock. And in most cases, you find President Bola Ahmed Tunubu, you know, receiving people in and out. Mm. If you come to where he stays in Abuja here, Lagos, in the Lagos house, you will know from when you take a turn, whether he's in town or not, any time of the day. There are times you can go there three in the night and you meet him there. But now, if you go to Villa, the front of Villa, it's like a graveyard because they don't allow anybody to go and see Mr. President. Well, let me take you up on that because you suggested that the government or the presidency, indeed the, the presidency specifically, has adopted a closed door policy and that even ministers and members of the National Assembly, presumably like yourself, are struggling to engage with the, the president. I mean, that sounds pretty serious, doesn't it? Yeah, it seems, but that is the truth. The only thing, you know, um, the, you, the news media put certain things not exactly the way. Mm. So now that I'm talking to you, hear it from the horses. Absolutely. Mouth. In every government, it's like that. You have the gatekeepers. Those who want the president to know everything and to have other opinions would even encourage the get the, those that matter mm. in the government to come over because, oh, d during Buhari's uh, administration, which I thought was not that good, but if you compare this now to Buhari's regime, you will give Buhari a thumbs up. Because well, so, some would say that would be rather difficult to do. <laughs> you know, because at least he opens up, people come to see him. I'm quoting, you quote me, and they, if, they, if, if it's not true, I don't speak just like that. Right. There are some ministers don't have access to Mr. President. The only access they have to Mr. President is when they are maybe invited, and some may not be invited. Or when they go for council meeting. And you know, when they go for council, by the time the president goes in, all of them are seated. Mm. And the president is the first person to leave. You can't say, oh, I want to, no, yeah. that is it. There is a procedure. And, the, and then the SGF, who is supposed to be the clearing house, I don't know about, you know, I've not seen him uh, most lately. But I'm telling you, Charles, I won't come to the TV or even in sure. private lie. So have you had a challenge in seeing the president yourself personally? Well, let me tell you one thing. The president, severally, if we meet in the public, he will say, ah, Ndume, why are you not coming? Why am I? And I said, no, 
Mr. President, when you look for me, I'll be there. You just said to him, well, he's not allowing me to come in. I said it once to one <laughs> right. of his staff <laughs> that they are the people that are keeping us out of this place. And so I will not struggle to come and see Mr. President. But I have an obligation mm. to speak for the people or speak for my people or speak as a senator. You can imagine I am the chief whip. If a chief whip cannot have access to Mr. President, the new senators, of course. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, let me tell you. And let me tell you in difference to it. Obasan just started during his government. In 24 hours, if any senator wants to see him, nobody will ask him, what do you want to see the president for? He makes sure that within 24 hours, any senator has access to him. Ministers go in and out. To know, uh, um, uh, Obasanjo, as old as he was older than our president, he will be saying, that is politics. You talk to the people, hear from the people. But now, to me, it seems, besides shielding Mr. President, they, give, they always give him assurance that everything is out there, is all right out there. And that is not the case. But you it, know it. Is it really his aides? Because, I mean, it, if, if we look back, for example, at the whole process that brought President Tinubu to office, I mean, even Arise News had an issue at one point trying to convince him to come to the you know, to, to come to a debate, to a town hall meeting, to no. all these things. I mean, he, he seems to have a proclivity away from that kind of thing. I mean, can you blame it entirely on his aides? Well, no. I mean, he, he doesn't no, seem to no, want to engage no, 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 with no, the public him, in that way. Knowing him personally, I don't think. I, don't, I want to say, you know, I said it before, and Arise TV always and the leadership or the all, all the, you see there are some TV stations that have mindsets about the government you know I'm coming here because of you hmm. you know and knowing that you are an objective you know renowned television journalist otherwise if you put it all together I would say that uh, Arise TV is anti-APC you know you can't say it's pro PDP, but that is, you know. And so when, when you don't have people, when people don't want to be arguing, it's not about Arise TV. TVC is virtually owned by Mr. President. What, yeah. Do you see him on TVC? No. So it's not like he is against the Yeah, but I know you were just making a suggestion, but clearly Arise is not anti-APC or well, anti-any party. Okay, I, mean, I, will, I will agree with that because of you. No, no, but it's true, though. Okay. I mean, we, we, so, don't, we, we just don't take sides with anybody. Okay, we, we, so let we me... try to be as objective okay, as possible. I, I, I agree with that. Yeah. But let me also say that there are some people that are introverts. There are some people that are extroverts. Right. There are people that can talk anytime. I was a, a teacher, now politician, and I am your friend. Mm. You called me this morning, and I had to come. I didn't yeah. plan for it. I don't have anything... And I appreciate to, that. Yeah, so um, don't blame the president for that. But, but now that you've mentioned the APC, I mean, you, you are, of course, a member of that APC, which is the ruling party in Nigeria. Some would say that, I mean, when you came in, you said, that one of the first things you said is that this government is going down. Yeah. That's the term that you use. Some would say that you've taken a double-barreled gun, <laughs> aimed it at your party's foot, no, and no. blown its feet off. No, that I isn't. mean, yourself, and that... Your, your very criticism is leveled at your own party, and you're helping the opposition deliver a sucker punch. There's no deli uh, opposition. <laughs> I like that. Okay. <laughs> I thought you had, don't you have opposition in the National Assembly? And no, I don't think so. You know. <laughs> I like that. So the APC has free reign to do whatever it wants. Not really. only that, this is a fact of it. The major uh, opposition is supposed to be PDP, isn't it? Mm. Or to some extent, um, the Labour Party. The Labour Party. Yeah. The Labour Party, I think, got it wrong up in issue. It has the b one of the biggest chance, especially with the youths, mm. obedient, obedient. But I think somewhere around the way they got it wrong. Well, and both parties are obviously having internal but problems. I uh, know uh, in APC we don't. No, no, I said both parties, yeah, the PDP okay. yeah, and So and you can the, see. So it means... The, well, obviously the when, APC when, is when, as when, well. When, you're when you're saying opposition. that you can't get access to your president and you're no. a senior member of the party. I mean, but that's not crisis in the party. 
Yeah, but, but yours is even worse because the crisis is with the country. I mean, you yourself are telling us that Nigeria is in crisis. Yeah. And that your party, which is in power, is unable to, to deal with that crisis, or at least the presidency is not able to deal with it because, I mean, that's an even bigger issue. I mean, the internal problems within political parties is a, is a slightly minor side thing. I mean, if your party, which Nigerians have voted in and given reins, the reins of office, if you're not able to handle the, the big issues which you yourself have enumerated, and your, your, your point was that the, the government is going down. That's your part. That's an even bigger crisis, isn't it? Well, I don't think that is a bigger problem than what they have on the other side. I think you are mixing things up no. a bit. You are talking about governance and you are talking about party administration. Yeah. Let me learn. Yeah, okay. See, once, and I can see, and I may see more of the reaction of Mr. President, especially when they, you know, they hear out, they hear mm. us out on this program. Maybe they in the villa are there watching this program and they may be able to pick. It's possible. Yeah, because that's the only way or the left of, of communication. Mm. Now, all I was saying, but it started, all this started with the motion that I and Karimi brought. Alarm, you know, you know, waking, giving us alarm, you know, uh, 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 telling the government that are you aware that the United Nations has statistical figures that 82 million Nigerians will face acute figure, uh, mm. hunger? Are you aware that Kade um, Harmonize is saying that Nigeria is now included in the host spot where a crisis will happen. Are you aware that the United, UNESCO is now counting and mm. treating malnutrition and that's in a good call. state? So it's that's a, a good, good call. call. Yeah. Once the government stands up, wakes up to it, this is normal. And once the people can get uh, have access to food, once the government will now make it available as they are negotiating mm. to have to increase the purchasing power of our workers, all these things will be forgotten. So but if nothing right. is being done, then there can be crisis. And your sense is that nothing is being done at Tangibly. the moment. Right. And the other thing is, as I said, in, I will still say what, mm. the, the president is caged in there, let me use that word again, and there are no people speaking out or doing anything for the Nigerians to see visibly and make, you know, <coughs> appreciate the effort of the government. Mm. For example, now we are faced with climate change palaver. The rain, for, the rain uh, see, rainy season in most, uh, especially in the north and other elsewhere, is hazy. But nobody is telling people what needs to be done and what the government is doing. Nobody is talking to the people. That is a problem. That is my concern, as I say. Yeah, well, some would argue that that's not entirely fair because you've got the, um, the agencies, I mean, that, are, agencies? that, that, that are in charge. Well, the, the National Emergency Management Agency, you've got the Ministry of Environment, you've got, he's just appointed somebody in, who used to be his spokesman, I, I think it's Ajuri Gilale, as a kind of special climate um, envoy. I mean, so the, 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 they, 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 they're not unaware of what is going on and, and I'm not their spokesman I'm just saying that they're not unaware of what is going on and every time the, there's a lot of talk and alerts are put out about the potential for flooding and so on and so forth um, so they do try to draw the attention of people to things but what I wanted to ask you is that looking at the things that you've pointed out and the way things are going at the moment with the economy and with the fiscal situation in this country, the people, as you said clearly, feeling the pinch of it as inflation goes through the roof. Do you believe we're going to see real growth in this country anytime soon? Yeah, it's possible because Nigeria is so blessed with natural and human resources. But no matter how blessed you are and how much... You have to harness those yeah, resources. That is the problem now. Yeah. And that's why we are calling on the president to harness those resources. Absolutely. And if for you to do that, you must have people out there that know Nigeria in the first place. So he needs to engage more. Basically. He needs to, no, he needs to get the right people into the office and he needs to be a Democrat. I, I lay, notice, this is not allegation. 
I said, this government is dominated by khaki truckers <laughs> and kleptocrats. Yeah. He needs to dominate his government. But that's with, always been the, the no, story no, no, no. of Nigerian governments, he though, needs, hasn't it? He needs to dominate his government with Democrats. Right. The people that worked and for him to be elected. Mm. The people that will realize his dream. The people that will look at him in the face and say, Mr. President, this is wrong. Let's do it this way. And he will argue. And he said, that person that takes superior argument. Mm. But when you gather kleptocrats and you gather kakistrocrats, the end result is what defines them. And, and your point is that this is a bad time for that to happen because yeah, the yeah, country yes. is going through a major economic crisis. And the government also inherited a very bad situation. Yeah. So you need somebody that is decisive like him, mm. but it is not enough to be strong and be decisive. Of course, when you take any action, there must be consequence and there must be something that you need to do. So mm. like now this removal of oil subsidy, let me tell you that I was, I, I, he, he abruptly announced this removal of oil subsidy. And I supported him because I was thinking that there is going to be a program that will take us out of the hands of these few people that are, you know, draining the economy mm. in the name of subsidy. And the savings from that will now be used, utilized for the people. And I'm saying that instead of foil subsidy that you remove mm. then you engage in other f subsidies that are important like food stamp like you know making food available mm. and that is not by doing palliatives palliatives are temporary measures so if you have experts around that knows this thing then you will not be you know overreacting mm. instead you will be managing the situation and carrying nigerians along nigerians know the situation it is not peculiar to Nigeria only. It is worldwide. Mm. The issue of hunger is worldwide. So if Nigerians are made to know that this is a problem that we have to face collectively, Nigerians are good Well, I, I don't them. know, maybe you, you can actually enlighten us because, I mean, you're a member of the, the, the Senate. Um, you're, you're a senior member of the government and uh, you're privy to things that a lot of ordinary people are not. I mean, it's been reported, for example, that because you mentioned the oil subsidy, I mean, that fuel suppliers are being owed more than six billion dollars, which has gone up considerably from the three billion dollars they were owed in April. That is according to Reuters news agency, which says that the NMPC is struggling to cover the gap between local pump prices and international fuel costs. And that means that there is a subsidy that is being paid to cover that shortfall. As you know, as you said, after President Tinubu announced an end to fuel subsidies last year, pump prices tripled. The NNPC was forced to put a cap limit on fuel prices because of the rising cost of living. And that cap added to a crash in the value of the Naira, essentially allowed subsidy to return. I mean, that's, the, that's the, 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 the story that's coming from experts. And according to industry, those industry experts, that subsidy, which we were led to believe, and you're pointing to, we were led to believe has ended, is going to cost at least $3.7 billion this year. So back to square one, in effect. Well, Charles, I must confess that I don't talk ignorantly or from, you know, I'm not an expert in the petroleum industry mm. stuff, and uh, I was not expecting us to discuss this subject. No, but, no it's just, it's, it's because you yeah, brought it yeah, up. But I mean, been, you don't have to dwell on it if you, if you don't want to. We can yeah, move no, on. No, not that it. I don't want to. Yeah. I always want to talk from the background of knowledge and yeah, facts. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. But I, as I told you, I one time asked the, uh, the initially the GMD of NMPC mm. now, now, that, wait a minute, you said we will we'll be saving one trillion by removing the oil subsidy. I said, where is the money? And he said, there is no money. I said, what? What do you mean there is no money? He said, no. <laughs> Before the removal of the subsidy, what they are facing is that they have to get 
borrow mm. or they are running at a loss. So they have, and there's, and. So, so basically they, whatever money is there will just go to fill that those yeah, gaps. Yeah, fill those gaps. That yeah. if they recover and there is profit because they are now a corporation, mm. they will pay the money to the government. And I say, wow, so why are you asking us to make sacrifice? And immediately after that, I'm, I was thinking that the Nigerian government, and I still argue on that now, mm. that we are talking about food subsidy. Now we have problem with food. Why don't you introduce food stamps? I'm yet to hear that. And the Senate passed a motion that I brought mm. that they should introduce food stamps. And look, let me say here again, this subsidy matter is not the problem. It is how it is being managed. Right. It's, it is overwhelmed by corruption. But if not, Nigeria, check, the American government right now is subsidizing about 18, have 18, inter, you know, 13 interventions, excluding fuel. But they subsidize agricultural products. Yeah, but they have the money food. to do it. I mean, the, 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 the reason no, no, no. why everybody kept I don't talking want to, about I don't want you to removing say that. subsidy no, was, I don't, was I don't because want they said Nigeria couldn't afford it. I don't want you to say yeah. that. Because, but, but, let me, let me right, just sure. That's why I say I disagree with that. In the whole world today, after Japan, and uh, yeah, America is the second largest or highest uh, uh, debtor. They borrow hmm. to to, to, to do what government well, is supposed to do. they have enough goods and services. Yeah, and, but you can't get enough, enough food a, and services. Of, a, of an economy. It to, doesn't matter to, for me. To offset that. Wait, what debt. is wrong with borrowing if it will be useful to the people? My mm. problem with borrowing is that if some people borrow that money to steal it and take it back to those people that gave us the money, that is where the problem is. Mm. But in America, I said they need to subsidize food. They need to subsidize uh, uh, transport. Mm. There's nothing wrong in tra subsidizing transport, food, uh, you know, and some other important things, basic needs of yeah. the people. But, but given all that you've said to us, and a lot of what you've said makes a lot of sense, and a lot of it is very important to point out, um, you, you, I mean, the cumulative effect of all of this is that there's a deepening sense of grievance, and you pointed that out, on the part of ordinary Nigerians, because they're bearing the brunt of this. But also, um, you hinted at the fact that all that would put, could potentially increase the chances of instability in the country. Yeah. Can you expand on that? Well, my fear, as I told you, is that you can ask people to be patient, to be tolerant, but if they can't get what uh, one square meal comfortably or mm. even struggle to get one. And where you have, I, I hope you are aware, and, and that's why I'm worried, that given looking at what has happened in Kenya, and, look at, and even looking at what our youths are posting in the social media, looking at their actions or the threat, and then, when I call the people in the villa, I don't want to mention name, but me, I don't fear I, if it gets to that. I said, are you aware? And I sent the message out to them. Are you aware that people are very angry out there? Are you doing something about it? And the response is that, yes, we are aware it's the work of opposition. I said, we are finished. Because no opposition would want to bring down the roof of the country on itself. Mm. Because they are in the country. So if the country collapses, is it only going to collapse on the ruling or the governing party? No. So when people in power start responding like that, then I'm worried. I'm worried for this president. I'm worried for myself. Well, There's a problem out there. Mm. A bag of rice is now selling for 100,000. A bag of maize is selling for 100,000. My wife was telling me that a, a basket of tomato is about 100,000 too. Onions, every food is going up the price. Inflation is 
the value of an era is going down. And then, not only that, when you tell people in government that, hey, people are hungry, angry, and they are preparing, or there are signs that they will revolt, and you say, no, don't worry about them. That is very, very dangerous. And I hope this will be, to me, God will exonerate me because I told them. And many Nigerians today told me and encouraged me to come for this year program, speak out on our behalf. And that's why I was elected. If the government doesn't do anything, <laughs> there will be problem. Well, on that note, I want to thank you very much indeed, Senator um, Dume, and uh, thank you for um, sounding that note of warning. Um, you, you've always been noted for that, and uh, I hope that the people who are um, in charge are listening to you. Thank you very much indeed. Senator Ali Ndume is the chief whip of the Nigerian Senate, and he's a senior member of the ruling APC party. Good to see you again. Thank you, Charles.